Hey guys, welcome to another, and I think the best episode of TFL Talking Trucks, because today we're gonna be talking about what's the best towing truck in the land. And I've got the two guys in America that have probably towed the most up the steepest grade with the most trucks ever that I can think of. Uh, say hi, uh, Andre, and say hi, Kent, please. This is Andre with a fast lane truck and Kent with MrTruck.com. We love the tow trailers and blizzards. <laughs> we do. That should be our new motto, Kent. I love it. <laughs> Snow towing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, in this, episode, in this episode, boys, we're going to be going and talking about mid-sized trucks, full-size trucks, and of course, the big boys, heavy duty trucks, and talking about which one tows the best. So let's get right to it. And let's start with the small trucks first. Actually, let's do small trucks, heavy duties, and then of course the ones that everybody is in most curious about, the full-size trucks. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. Andre, why don't you tell us about what the Ike Gauntlet is, because I'm sure there are some viewers or listeners out there who are not, let's say, up on what we do with trucks and towing. Absolutely. So the Ike Gauntlet is the world's toughest towing test. And we're based here in Colorado and we have the mountains. So the Ike is eight mile run up a mountain, which is about 7% grade. And it's eight miles long, the entire run. And the top elevation is over 11,153 feet above sea level and all kinds of engines, all engines struggle, people struggle, everybody struggles on this test and we tow usually maximum trailer loads. Yep, and how do we score an Ike Gauntlet? So we score it with four elements. So the downhills portion, we look at number of brake applications. So the number of times the driver has to apply the brakes, to slow the truck and trailer down. It's a 60 mile an hour speed limit, so we don't, never want to exceed the speed limit. Stay legal uh, on all respects. On the way up, it's the time. So eight minutes is a perfect run up the mountain at 60 miles an hour. And we also report on the trip meter fuel efficiency. And finally, the rest of the Eye Gauntlet score that we use for the Gold Hitch Awards, which we've done over the last six years, is actually our subjective scores. So it's uh, the other things about the truck, the squat, the suspension, the handling, the mirrors, the interior, and even the sound uh, level inside the truck. Hey Kent, um, before we get to the individual trucks, why don't you tell them what you look for? Because let's face it, you guys are the dynamic duo of towing. So Kent, what do you look for when you get behind the wheel of a truck and you're uh, hauling a big old trailer? Well, we try to set up everything so they are safe. And that's another thing I want to talk about is we have a crew that does this up and down the mountain. I wouldn't suggest you average people just take your truck and try to see how fast you can climb that mountain. Because, we, you know, it's, it's dangers involved. There's a lot of traffic. And there's always weather patterns. So we take all that into consideration and try to keep everybody safe. But, you know, we, we wanted to, to kind of measure how the hand, trucks handle with the trailer. If we set them everything up right and how the braking, how acceleration is, all the things you want to know. When you're climbing these mountains because it's a lot different than just driving across Kansas. So you got to know, you know, if you're going to have to downshift, if you're going to, you know, tow haul mode, the exhaust brakes, all those things that help you. And uh, so we're always trying to measure those kind of things to see how they handle so that when you guys are climbing those mountains, you'll know kind of how to set your truck up in your trailer and, and do it safely. Yeah, I guess we figure, Kent, that if it could tow up the side of a mount, it could probably tow whatever you're towing across Kansas, right? I mean, you know, we, we put it in the most extreme condition so that you guys don't have to. I, I think that's fair to say. And it's yeah, also yeah. tow across Texas, right? Well, <laughs> there's probably a couple of hills in Texas, maybe. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's just jump right in. Let's talk about the trucks that we've taken up and down the mountain. And guys, we're going to be talking about which ones did well, which ones didn't do so well, but we're not going to be picking our favorites, at least not formally. We do that 
every year and the Gold Hitch Awards. We just did those, so check out that podcast or video. But we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about the trucks that we went up and what we liked about them, what we didn't like about them, and how they scored. So let's start with uh, the brand new truck, the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Uh, it went up the mountain in nine minutes and 54 seconds, so it was a little bit slower than the eight minutes. Uh, it did a 4.7 MPG, uh, and it had 11 brake applications, uh, and we were towing about, uh, what, 6,500 pounds. So, Kent, what did you feel about that truck? Is that a good towing truck? And that's, of course, the one right now with the Pentastar. That's the only 3.6 liter that's available. Did you like that as a towing rig, or do you think that's well, more of an off-roading rig? Yeah, it's an off-road rig. At 11 brake applications is a little bit on the scary side. Now, we drew that flat, too, on the MPG run. They did actually impress you. They really controlled the 7,000-pound trailer on the flats. On the mountains, it's a little different. You can see coming down the hill, it's a little bit scary. And, it, you know, it didn't accelerate that fast going up the hill. So, I, you know, I, it's not really something that I would daily tow a trailer in the mountains with. That's Yeah, go climb the mountains with it and pull your ATV in the mountains and call that good. But you know, hauling that kind of that kind of truck towing the maximum weight in the mountains is not exactly what I would do. You're fine on the flats. We proved that, but no, that's uh, yeah. So remember, Andre, that was the, that was the second time we took that uh, Gladiator up the mountain, and the first time actually the engine behaved much differently. You remember that? Yeah, you and I did it, uh, right? And yeah. uh, actually, so this 3.6 liter V6. It produced about, what, 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. It's an eight-speed automatic. And the way that I organize this data, uh, we're talking about, of course, the smallest trucks, right, the midsizers. And it's in the order of time up the mountain. So the Gladiator just happened to be the slowest on this particular list. And I think it just doesn't have enough torque. I remember when it was just screaming, it was like near 6,000 RPM a lot of the run. Yeah, as a, as a guy who loves not breaking stuff, I was terrified that we were going to break it. It was just at the red line the whole time. Uh, it did it, uh, but it didn't do it um, as a happy truck. And then the second time we did it, which was with the 2020, it actually didn't scream that much. It, it acted much more uh, like every other truck, right? It would, RPMs would come up, and then uh, the truck would accelerate, and then the weight would pull it back, and then it would bring the RPM up again. It wasn't kind of at that red line the whole time. Really... Interesting. Yeah, I, I, wonder if they, I, wonder, I wonder if they uh, uh, maybe they reprogrammed something in those uh, engines and and uh, controllers for the right. engine and the transmission because it was it was more of a calm. It was a little bit more calm, but it performed very similarly both times. And uh, on the way down, eleven brake applications is not great. It's not the worst performance as you will see on this list. <laughs> Yeah, not the worst, yeah. <laughs> but it's not the best either. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, the next one we tested back in 2017, and this is a towing rig in the midsize world, at least. It's the uh, 2017 uh, Canyon and the one with the baby Duramax, the baby diesel. Uh, it went up in 911, um, averaged an astounding 6.9 MPG, which is, uh, well, it's the best out of everybody out of all the midsizers. Uh, and get this, Andre, guess how many brake applications, you know? One. 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 All right, Ken, <laughs> do you like the baby Duramax? Is that, is that, I do. Uh, is that fair to say it's a good old, good old towing truck? Well, sure, it's like the only diesel in the class. It's the only one with an exhaust brake, which always helps uh, the controlling that. So you get the telehome mode and the, the exhaust brake and you got something, I'll slow you down, down the hill. Yeah, it's not gonna race up the hill, but you know, a lot of people understand that. I mean, towing trailers, it's not a race up the hill. You're trying to be safe and you're trying to maintain speed and not feel uncomfortable doing all that. So, no, it's it's impressive for what it is, a, a being a small truck, that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very controlled truck. I actually enjoy driving it. And, yeah, breaking one time, going downhill, how do you beat that? Yeah, and Andre, it's really, really remarkable what General Motors is doing in their midsizers, uh, with the, especially with the diesel. It's a 2.8 liter, right? So pretty small displacement four-cylinder. But it's got a lot of torque, 369 pound-feet of torque. On the way down, with one brake application, Mr. Truck, I think you were driving. If uh, We've tested this truck many times. But I think this one time, I remember, you were driving, and at the very top of the mountain, you kind of touched the brake once to bring it to 50. And then the exhaust brake, integrated brake controller, right, which is rare on this yeah, mid Yeah, that's true. And, yeah. In its mid-sized segment, it just held it down. But on the way up, nine minutes, eleven seconds. It wasn't very fast. Although you, you didn't get too excited going up the hill, you could kind of relax. You were just kind of moseying on in. 
Now, you viewers need to know that that diesel may disappear. Go out and buy one today. Everybody, go out and buy one. Yeah, what's the rumor, Andre? Yeah, there was a rumor that for next generation, for 2023 uh, model year or year trucks for midsizers, that General Motors will be discontinuing all of its current engines. This is unofficial. This is still a rumor. Uh, but the rumor is that the because they're selling their Thailand factory where the engine is made, that the, this diesel will disappear. The, also, the 3.6 liter gas V6 would disappear, uh, and the current 2.5 liter gas, and they're all going to be replaced with a 2.7 liter turbo gas engine. So let's move on um, to the next truck, which is uh, the good old Frontier. And I say good old because it is old, uh, <laughs> very old. Uh, this year it got updated with a new engine, a new transmission. Unfortunately, we had the Frontier, but we had it during the lockdown, so we were not able to test it. So the one we're talking about is the one with the venerable uh, V6 that's been around forever. Uh, the numbers, uh, Kent, are 845 uh, up the mountain, 3.7 MPG, eight grade applications. Uh, you know, kind of mid-pack. What do you think of the Frontier? Yeah, a lot of people have bought a Frontier. It's a, it's a truck that's been around a long time. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, right in the middle there. And there's nothing wrong with the numbers on it. I mean, that's respectable for, for midsize. So, you know, it wasn't remarkable in the area, but that truck, <laughs> when you don't change them in 20 years or 15 years, they can't be too remarkable. So we're looking at old old trucks, old data, and uh, hopefully a new future. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I that bigger energy, of course, would have helped, but, you know. I disagree. Uh, I, I think, well, first of all, that 4-liter, the older V6, right, we're talking about, uh, it's a very torquey engine with about 281 pound-feet of torque it produces, which is really good for a gas, non-turbo engine. And I remember we've tested this several times. I remember you guys, with Nathan even, tested it uh, towing a boat up the mountain. Then yeah, whose boat was that, Andre? And, <laughs> and again and again. And it always did it. It always went up the mountain. Uh, and it always kind of did what we asked it to do. So I think it actually, other than the braking performance, which is eight brake applications is a little bit too many, uh, I think the engine was really solid. Uh, dude, you know, I get in that truck and I expect to be playing Duran Duran on the eight track, you know, or a tape deck. I mean, it just feels like, uh, you know, a time that is so far behind us now. Yes, it's honest. It does everything it's supposed to do. But good golly, Miss Molly, give me something that's, you know, a little bit more modern and current, especially if you're paying over 30K for like a top of the line Pro 4X. Well, that's the problem with that truck. We tested it so many times. You almost fall asleep driving it. It's the same old, same old, same old. Nothing changed. <laughs> All right. Should that's we move on? Handle. <laughs> move on. Same. The same, yeah, let's not beat a, uh, a, a, a dog that hopefully will be a, a spring chicken at some point. And I know I mixed my metaphors there. All right. Uh, now, this is another one that actually uh, did exceptionally well, but uh, it, we didn't tow as much with it. So this is a Ridgeline. Uh, we, we, we towed the 2017. It went up the mountain really fast in 816. Did really well in fuel economy. Um, the second best, in fact, 6.4 MPG. Uh, uh, but uh, brake applications were unknown because we were only towing 4,800. Why were the brake applications unknown? Did we not? Did we fall asleep and not count? What happened there, Ken or Andre? What happened with that one? Uh, so uh, the Ridgeline, we're talking yeah. about the updated truck, but the older transmission. So yeah. this is the still the six-speed. Uh, it didn't have an integrated brake controller, and nobody fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, but uh, it was Nathan and I actually on that particular test. And we were using a combination um, of different brake controllers. We were using uh, that IntelliHitch, I believe. Um, yeah. Which, um, is kind of a mechanical system to actuate the brakes. Um, so we couldn't really measure the brake performance on the way down uh, because it was kind of doing its own thing. It was controlling the brakes using the mechanical force uh, with the hitch. Uh, but on the way up, uh, it surprised how quick it was, actually. Now you know that Kent, you know that truck's built on the pretty much a similar chassis to the uh, Honda Odyssey, which is a minivan. So is that a towing truck or is that a, a kind of a um, lifestyle truck? I thought the Odyssey was that dune buggy thing that Honda had for a while there. That's a minivan, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 
Oh, yeah, I like the Ridge Light. It makes fun of it. Now it's got, what, a nine-speed? I mean, it keeps improving, but it's a lifestyle truck. They've got their built-in clients for that, people who bought all those other CRVs or whatever they are. So they're all standing in line to buy something else from Honda, and so that it works for them. But I, I think it's remarkable with the trunk. I mean, everybody complains about the spare tire being the trunk. Well, look at almost all your SUVs. The spare tire's in the trunk. you got to unload those, too. I don't see the point, but I like, I like a lot of stuff about it. I've pulled ATVs in it, pulled trailers with it my ATV trader, and I, I really like the Ridge Line for, for what it is. I think it's a class by itself. But, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, it, it accelerates. I mean, it's not an off-road truck. You proved that wrong. But, uh, yeah, it's, I, I like the Ridge Line. Well, I, I got to tell you, you, you just said it, uh, it's, got, it's in a class all by itself until about a year from now when the new Hyundai Santa Cruz comes out, which will be uh, another lifestyle truck that'll, well, I don't know. Is it a truck? Is it not a truck? I, I just want to, I, I want to know if you're going to go tow with the Santa Cruz and I want to see you two guys take that thing up the mountain because I'll be curious to see how that does uh, actually towing the load. I thought that was called a wheelbarrow. <laughs> what is it called? The Santa Cruz, you know. Oh, oh Santa Cruz. Okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Subaru Brat or an El Camino, except more modern. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, well, we, be sure to stay tuned for these guys taking the Santa Cruz up, uh, towing whatever we'll be towing at that point. We right, will next. do it, and we'll do it in a snowstorm. No, oh, next. yes. That would be exciting. We'll I'm, be kidding. I'm kidding. Of course, we, we never tow on ice for these tests. We always watch the weather. All right, next up is the most popular midsize truck in America. Um, coming all the way from either Mexico or San Antonio, it's the 2016 Toyota Tacoma, uh, and it did it up the mountain at 8.5, which is almost as fast as you can go. Basically, that means we were at the speed limit the whole time, or you were at the speed limit. Uh, 4.5 MPG, 21 brake applications, Andre. Did you not lose count? What the hell happened there? Uh, I remember, I believe Mr. Chuck was driving, yep. and I had a notebook in front of me, and I was actually marking, uh, marking on the notebook how many brake applications we were doing. Uh, once again, uh, General Motors is the only one with an integrated brake controller. Uh, this one didn't have it. We were using another solution. Um, and towing similar weights, you know, between, what, 6,100 pounds and about 7,000 pounds for all of these trucks that we mentioned. But 21 brake applications, it was not downshifting properly. You know, the transmission wasn't helping. Uh, the truck uh, just didn't like going downhill, although it did it safely. The brakes never overheat it, but that's not the feeling you want to have when you're pushing the brake a lot. Yeah, the 21 brake applications, we were counting the runaway ramps on the way down the hill, <laughs> make sure we didn't miss any. And then we just about had to drag our feet out the door like Fred Flintstone and try to get some control. But yeah, yeah, yeah you, you don't want to be riding the brakes all the way down the hill because all the smoke comes out and your brakes go away and then you're, are, you're flying off to the end of the highway. But no, I mean, that's, yeah, that's... Definitely got to set that one up better with brake controls because you, you'd really end up using a manual brake controller to control that. You know, if your truck's not braking enough, you're going to have to lay into the trailer a little more. You're going to have to actually shift down, downshift. That's when we would have probably should have manually downshift and come down the hill instead of relying on the computer. Yeah, it's also the only truck with uh, disc rear drum bra drum brakes, right? With uh, sorry, not disc with discs in the front and drums in the back, which normally doesn't really matter. But when you're towing. Uh, it probably does matter. So uh, I don't know why they still keep, and I know I don't want to be flogging a dead horse here, but, you know, every other truck has disc brakes all around. I think the Tacoma can go to disc brakes, especially when you're, you know, being pushed by a big load down the mountain. All right. And of course, the fastest truck up the hill uh, by three seconds, Andre, three seconds, yeah. uh, was the uh, Ford Ranger, the 2019. It did it in 802, five. 0.2 MPG, seven brake applications. And this is uh, a truck that uh, Ford says is all new, but looks very similar to the Ranger that's been in the rest of the world for a long time. Kent, what do you think of the Ranger? Do you like it? Well, yeah, and that's, that's pretty good miles. That's 5.2 miles per gallon. That's very good. Of course, it's fast. It just proves, bring something to Colorado, make sure it's got a turbo in it. it makes all the difference in the world. We see that with diesel. We see that with everything that, that's out there. And yeah, it's a new kid on the block, so it has to prove itself, which they've done a really good job with it. And look, if, if that's what happens, pretty soon everybody will have one engine, one transmission in the midsize. That seems to be a trend Ford's trying to start, and it may work. But I, I like the Ranger. I'm waiting a long time. I'm waiting for a decade to get a Ranger with a crew cab. You know, before it was always super cab or regular cab. You had to go to Mexico or somewhere else in some other country to get a crew cab. 
So yeah, it's it's interesting, and they've got you know they've got to kick butts so they can beat Tacoma in sales. So I'm glad to see it's it's doing well uh, as a new truck like that. It's only a year old, but yeah. I remember, remember when we went on the launch of the thing? It had the brake controller, but it was kind of installed by the dealer. It was you know kind of a, a not from the factory thing. What's happened to the brake control in the Ranger? Can you get it with one now, or is it still not available? No, it's still the same story. So it's basically an accessory. So you yeah. buy the truck, um, you choose the towing package, and it's very similar to what's happening currently with the Gladiator. Same thing, you buy the truck, towing package, and then you have to actually ask either the dealership, um, I think the way to do it is through the dealer to get the actually accessory brake controller and they will install it for you and it will look professional but it's kind of a more of this knob controller. So it's not really, uh, you know, a traditional, the one, the one you pinch. Um, so I just wish they integrated it better, basically. Yeah, uh, I think all these trucks should have brake controllers. I don't know how the companies decided that uh, a truck without a brake controller was a thing, but somehow it happened in the midsize truck. And I think next generation will be seeing a lot more integration of brake controllers. All right, Kent, uh, before we get on to the big boy trucks, the heavy duties, if you had to pick one of these as your only midsize towing truck, which one would you get? Oh gosh, well if it was free, I'd probably go with the Canyon diesel <laughs> or the Colorado diesel. I mean, you can't beat the fuel mileage and it does probably, those are the only trucks out there with brake control in the midsize class. So it's set it up right. And you know, I, yeah, that, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the Ranger too. I almost bought one of those, but it just came out a little bit too late. Yeah, I, I'd go with the diesel. All right, how about you, Andre? What, which one did you, which would you choose? Well, I remember 2017 and you guys can watch our gold hitch deliberations. I mean, that truck was on top of the world back then as far as midsize towing trucks. Uh, but the Ford Ranger is looking pretty interesting these days. Obviously, it's been about, what, two, three years since we tested uh, the diesel. And I would say that the Ranger is hard to beat on power. Uh, as you can see, it's the quickest. Uh, braking performance wasn't the best, but I think uh, the 10-speed still can be recalibrated maybe a little bit. Maybe it will change. Um, so I'm going to go with the Ranger. All right, I'm yeah. going to say that diesel trucks and towing go together like coronavirus and face masks. So I'm going to have to go with, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with uh, uh, the Canyon of Colorado diesel. I think as a, as a towing midsize truck, that's a hard combination to beat. Uh, and I think uh, you're right, Ken, it might be going away. So if you guys are, you know, interested in getting that new truck smell, get yourself one in the next couple of years because uh, chances are it's not going to be around uh, past 2021. And it does have the highest tow rating. It beats the Ranger on tow rating. Yep. All right. Shall we move on to the heavy duty truck boys? Uh, and let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about the three. And once again, Andre has uh, ranked these from slowest up the hill to fastest up the hill. Uh, so the 2020 GMC um, HD did it in uh, 1147. Uh, it averaged 2.4 MPG and nine brake applications. Now, Ken, you drive our heavy duty trucks because you're the man with the uh, CDL. Uh, so what was it like? Towing heavy with the GMC, and keep in mind, guys, the GMC and the uh, and the Chevy are very similar trucks, so you, they're, they're you know they're interchangeable in some ways, at least when it comes to towing. Yeah, these. Uh, I mean, this was the fun one, the forty foot trailer and thirty thousand pounds, and of course the snowstorm. And it, yeah, it's very interesting. If you look at the MPG, I mean, they're almost identical MPG. That shows you when you're pulling thirty thousand pounds, you can only get so much MPG out of them. So that's uh, yeah. The, the GMC, we're so happy, like you brought up in the previous. Uh, video Roman that it finally caught up the rest of guys instead of being you know 22 23,000 pounds it jumped over 30,000 pounds so it joined the club and they got a 10 speed so it's everything's working well in there it's just not a fast truck I mean when you say the same size 6.6 .6, and you pump it up extra power and you change ratios I mean if they would have kept the 373 I think it would have been better than what they did with what is it 355 whatever the axle ratio is in those dualies now on the GM side and the Ram just chugs along. I mean, the brakes were so impressive on that because the adaptive cruise control worked really well. And, you know, sometimes I've seen the Fords work really well. GM, they started off bragging about how that Allison could go coast to coast and never touch anything. So it's, it's, they're, they're all trying to do that, be safer coming down the hill. But as you can see, nine brake applications on a GMC, 
it was a little more scary pulling 30,000 pounds and breaking that many times. You're kind of getting close to where you might be smoking the brakes. And, you know, again, we could have manually shifted. We did a few other things with those trucks. But the Ford is, you know, the newest, uh, I guess, one on the block. They waited for everybody else to come out and, and play for a year before they brought their 2020 Super Duty out. And, you know, it's it was fast. That's what's probably the most impressive thing about that truck, how fast it went uphill. It just had, like, an unbelievable power. Andre, as a former um, Duramax HD truck owner, were you impressed by the new uh, Duramax? Do you like what GM has done with their new power plant? Yeah, so this is a, their 6.6 uh, uh, liter uh, V8 turbocharged engine, and it's been around actually for a couple of years, since 2017, uh, relatively unchanged, although they changed the cooling on it for 2020. Um, and 910 pound-feet of torque is where they're at right now. So for 2020, they changed the rest of the truck, kept the engine mostly unchanged, and then slapped a 10-speed um, Allison-branded automatic transmission behind it. And when I first heard that, I was like, yes, uh, because I used to have a 2002 Duramax with a five-speed Allison. So you're doubling the number of gears, right? So I was really excited. Uh, but the time up the mountain in this GMC, 11 minutes, 47 seconds, uh, it just didn't impress me that much, especially, you know, with a heavy load, 30,000 pounds. So I had high hopes. My, my, the benchmark was so high, and the, the, the new GM heavy-duty truck didn't quite, you know, meet my high expectation. Yeah, yeah. because that six-speed beat it. The six-speed in the, in the Ram beats the 10-speed in the Al with the Allison. That, that's weird, but anyway, that's what yeah. it is. But considering, guys, that GM was at, what, 24,000 max towing forever, right? And they kept, they kept pushing the narrative that it's not what owners uh, want, but what owners need, which to me always sounded a little fishy. <laughs> it was great to see them, <laughs> great to see them step up to, to the 30K finally and put their big boy pants on. And speaking of big boy pants, uh, you know, a lot of our, reader, our, our readers, viewers, and listeners would say there's no bigger boy pants than uh, towing with a 2020 Ram with the Cummins straight six. Um, and uh, we ran the 2020 Ram up the mountain. You guys did it again. Um, 30,000 pounds. It went up in 1132. So, you know, um, 12, 13 seconds faster. It did a little bit better on fuel economy, 2.5 brake applications. But this was a crazy part. Is, um, sorry, 2.5 MPG. This was a crazy part. Zero brake applications. What the heck happened, Kent? You didn't have to hit the brake once. I know. That's what's really cool about pulling that much weight, you know, downhill, is anybody can do it. I'm not saying you could because you're on a CDL, but it wasn't like you had to, you know, stress out at all. You, it wasn't any special techniques you had to use. You just scared the damn thing. That's all you did. It, it was amazing. And, you know, you talk about confidence pulling big trailers. A lot of people are worried about pulling a big trailer like that, with, whether it's an RV or whatever it is. And something like this, when you, when you don't worry about burning up your brakes and you've got its controlled run or exhaust brake, I don't know if it's any better than anybody else. It's just louder. It sounds cooler. But, you know, it's, yeah, that's one truck that, that just really inspired, the, you know, confidence. And I, and I like that. I mean, I'm an old guy, so I've been doing this for four years. But that is a, is a truck that you can give to anybody and get their CDL and, and they can go cross country and not be scared every time they came to a mountain pass. I think so the, anyway. the comments, especially this one, the 3,500 high output, right? Um, it, it's a new rating for that engine, right? 1,000 pound feet of torque uh, for this motor, still a six speed ISIN transmission, but it's, I think it's maybe the most manly one of the three. And by that, I mean the sound it makes. You know, it still sounds like a kind of a big rig sound. You can hear the exhaust brake come on. Um, and it kind of gives you those inputs, you know, the sound, you know, the feeling behind the wheel uh, that it's, it's confident, inspiring, basically. Kind of like, uh, uh, Kent, just, after a, kind of like Kent after a big bowl of beans. <laughs> I don't know if that makes you comfortable. It makes you move around a lot. <laughs> So, so, yeah, and uh, those Cummins engines are usually very efficient, especially with big loads. So it was fairly impressive. But the time was slow. Yeah. Um, what's the rumor with the transmission? There's a rumor going around that, that Ram might be um, switching transmissions. Interesting, huh? What, what's, what, what's the scoop, scoop on the street? Yeah, it's, it's between the ZF, which has an eight-speed heavy-duty transmission, 
and also the new nine-speed Allison. So what GM is using is a 10-speed that GM initially designed, and then they gave that transmission prototypes and designs to Allison. They tested and uh, basically validated everything, and now GM is using the 10-speed. But Allison itself has a nine-speed that they've been working on. So, so the rumor is that Ram might be switching from Ison to either this nine-speed Allison or the eight-speed ZF, which is a, another heavy-duty transmission. And there's a lot of excitement here, but there's no official, no official word yet. That really yeah, surprises me too. The Ison is what bailed Ram out. Bell had Ram has had problems with transmissions, automatics for quite a few years. They keep improving them, but the Ison is a big jump for them to be a dependable heavy-duty hauler. And why wouldn't they just go to Ison and say, "Hey, build me a ten-speed"? I, I don't quite know why they'd be jumping ship when Ison served them so well all these years. I'm sure it has a lot to do with money, Kent. I'm just guessing. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's talk about the final uh, entry in our, now we're switching to Super Duty, not Heavy Duty, because we're talking about the 2020 Ford F-350. Uh, it flew up the mountain, boys, uh, 10, point, uh, 10 seconds, 10 minutes and 20 seconds, which is a minute faster than um, the, G, uh, the Ram and over a minute 15 faster than the GMC. Uh, same fuel economy, 2.4. Uh, but five brake applications. So, uh, Kent, how was the Super Duty? Well, yeah, five brake applications is, is respectable. I mean, it, it's it, what's really cool, and I probably have said this too many times, they have that overlay steering on it because, you know, it's got a circulating ball, not rack and pinion. And they had to do that uh, the overlay thing like RVs have had for a few years so they could use that pro backup crap, I mean, pro backup system for the little dial you use. But the, uh, you know, that makes it steer just like rack and pinion. I love that. You know, Ram had rack and pinion on two-wheel drives for two or three years, and they quit it. A few of the Kenworths and, and, you know, the Cascadia, all those tried it for a while. But so Ford's decided to use what the RV industries use, that overlay, that extra electric motor on there that helps you steer, and it's variable. And it, oh, it's, I mean, Ford, in old days, you know, you had quite a bit of free play in there. And they've always, you know, wondered, you know, Ram used to be one of the best steering trucks. Now I think this overlay thing Ford puts it at the top of the steering and pulling all that rig. You don't want fatigue going down the road where you got to keep all that free play. I mean, it was wonderful steering. So that impressed me as much as anything. But the speed, the power, anytime you push it to the floor, I mean, you've got power. And that's nice with the trailer trying to you know, go around an obstacle or somebody not knowing how to drive in front of you. It's, it's good to be able to get out of the way when you need to. Andre, what are the numbers on that uh, Super Duty, on the new Super Duty? Well, dude, it, it's class leading. Uh, it's, they call it a new third generation Power Stroke. It's a 6.7 liter, same displacement as before, but it's 475 horsepower and 1,050 pound feet of torque. Both of those numbers are, you know, way above the competition. The Cummins is at 400 horsepower right now, um, and the, um, the Duramax is at 445. So 475 is a huge number, and the torque also is really huge, and it's a new 10-speed. So it's a new Ford designed and built 10-speed uh, automatic transmission. And this truck, uh, we tested it also uh, zero to 60 testing. It was one of the quickest, it was the quickest, in fact, heavy duty truck, zero to 60 acceleration. Um, so it's just a monster. Another right, thing about boys. the contest in the hill is we went to three inch couplers on that custom iron bolt trailer we had. So I mean, you got three inch balls on all these trucks. These trucks have balls. Big yeah. balls, Kent. <laughs> yes, big ones. Very big balls. All right, boys. Uh, if you had to pick only one heavy duty truck or super duty truck to tow with for the rest of your life, which one would it be? I'll start with you, Andre, this time. Yeah, it's a tough one again, uh, but I, I'm going to have to go forward uh, once again. And a couple of reasons. Um, I do love that exhaust brake in the Ram, uh, but Ford also has one. It's basically adjustable veins on the turbocharger that you know work as an exhaust brake on that particular truck. But it's just smooth, nice to drive, easy to drive. I've drove. I drove all three of these trucks with Mr. Truck uh, in the cab because I have a learning permit as well for the CDL, um, and with the power and just overall confidence of the Ford, um, it's the Ford. All right, how about you, Kent? Which would you pick? Well, it's, it's fairly close. Of course, I, you know, I like the Ford. The numbers are good for the Ford, and you know, they, they, 
they've been really ahead of they have their time on towing for all things that they've done in the brake control all that stuff. They're like the first ones to do it. But the Ram really impressed me. I mean, it's close. It's close. I'd have probably to slip flip a coin, but I planned it for the Ford, but I really like that Ram. And I had so much hope for the GM, but I, it's it's not quite where I thought it would be. I mean, there's some things they listen to me and they can change on it, and I would really like them, but that's how it goes. No, I, I have to pick a Ford. I'm sorry, Ram. I really like the Ram. <laughs> Uh, I'd go for the Ram boys. I, I love the straight six. I think a straight six is the smoothest uh, of all uh, engine configurations. And I love the interior on the Ram. You know, if you love kind of uh, Western leather, right, uh, that truck has it all, right? It, it just has that kind of cowboy uh, essence. And you're right. I think the Ford probably in terms of performance is a little bit better, uh, especially up here at elevation. But just being in that, um, in that uh, Ram, I just love the, the the smell, the feel, and the straight six. So hard to beat for me, at least. And, and the most common question we currently are getting before we switch gears to the full size trucks is when is the new update to the Ram coming? Because people want the new cab, right? They want, you know, the interior is already new, like you said, Roman. But they want the longer cabs, you know, nicer cabs, uh, new transmissions. We don't know anything yet. Nothing official. That's a good point. Yeah, good point, Andre. Because the Ram is the smallest crew cab now. That one, the mega cab, of all of all three of them, it's the small one. You know, everybody else has got a bigger cab. That's a good point. We don't know yet. We don't know. All right, now what you've all been waiting for: uh, the most uh, popular trucks in the land, uh, the half tons or the full size trucks. And let's just do it the same way, Andre. We did it last time, starting at the slowest up the mountain, going to the fastest. And the fastest up the mountain, I'm not going to give away, but the slowest is certainly the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, of course, the Toyota Tundra. It went up in 18, uh, 2.9 MPG, 11 brake applications. Um, really kind of starting to show its age. Kent, how'd you feel, uh, how'd you feel in the Tundra? Did you do that one, Kent? Well, yeah, I, I, I'm sure I've done it some time. You know, this is the 16th for new number numbers. I just had one a week ago. So, yeah, there, it's... It's cool that it's got a 430 rear end. I mean, the only other truck that has that is a Ford F450. So you got this half ton that's sucking gas because it's got a 430 rear end, but that has helped its towing. So I don't think it towed that bad. I mean, yeah, it, it didn't get it got the worst fuel mileage, and it was the slowest, but that's a good engine that's in there. That 350, that 5.7, I mean, and it's got a tow haul mode. It's got a few things that are nice. It's just such a dated truck. I mean, I went to the first launch of that. I don't know if it was 2012 or, or 1912. I can't remember. But anyway, it was way back then when they did that. And so, I mean, you know, it's it's another thing like the Honda Ridgeline. People love those Toyotas. They'll keep buying whatever they make. I mean, they can make golf carts and people buy them. So that, that's, but it's a decent truck. I love that back window slides all the way down. And they actually may have had the biggest crew cab, the crew max before it Ford or anybody stretched it because it's always been a very big cab on that truck. So there, there's good things about it. It just is. It's dated. I mean, you look around in the middle and you can't find enough USB ports. You can't find hardly some of the modern things everybody else has because they haven't changed anything except maybe a headlight. That's pretty pretty important to change out headlight design once in a while. Yeah, and big buttons. It's got big knobs and buttons, which is always good. Uh, Andre, what, what are the numbers on that truck? Hey, dude, uh, did you notice something? Mr. Chuck just called the 5.7 liter in the Toyota a 350. That's I noticed pretty impressive. That and I was hoping to ignore. I was hoping to uh, you know ignore that, but but now that you brought it up, he did call it a three fifty. Uh, but it is a that Chevrolet guys have noticed, even though. <laughs> <laughs> even it, it, though I'll give you that. It is, it is a V eight, <laughs> and it is it is a, a venerable V eight. So what do you think of the Tundra, Andre? So the Tundra. Uh, first of all, uh, 381 horsepower, pretty respectable. 401 pound-feet of torque, once again, respectable. They haven't changed those specs in probably since I was in high school, I think. Uh, the six-speed is good, and they haven't changed the transmission in a very long time either. Um, I was just um, – the 430 rear end, right, is for towing. I expected it to do better, especially on the downhill, right, because when you have that kind of a low – um, ra uh, ratio on the differential, it, you know, it's, it's supposed to put the engine in the right RPM to give you kind of engine braking on the way down. Uh, obviously, these are not diesels, so, they, but they still can use a little bit of that back pressure. And uh, I don't know, it's a solid truck, but it was the slowest, uh, once again. 
Okay, let's keep going. Um, now we're going to talk about the next slowest, which was the uh, 2017 Titan. Now we know there's a new Titan. Once again, we had it here, uh, you know, recently. We didn't have a chance to, unfortunately, tow with it because we're locked down. So, um, you know, we'll get it up the mountain as soon as we can. So we're talking about the previous Titan, not the refreshed Titan. Eight minutes and 12 seconds up the mountain, uh, a respectable 3.2. Um, it's kind of mid-pack and then nine brake applications. Um, Kent, you like the Titan, new or old? What's your call? Well, I was really impressed when it first launched it, whatever year that was. And they, they, uh, you know, it's interesting that it's it's faster than the, the Tundra up the hill. It's got better MPG up the hill. It's got better brakes down the hill than the Tundra. And that's, you know, it's real close competition. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's an interesting track. I like that. I really like the Pro 4X package on it. I've always thought that was pretty good. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a middle-of-the-line truck. And you've got your people who are loyal to the Titan, and they'll keep buying them as long as they keep making them, but you know, things are kind of disappearing over there, losing their diesel or losing a lot of their stuff. And so I'm hoping this new one, it's got a good look to the new one, but yeah, it's, it's, it's midline. It's not compared to the rest of the pack. It's not impressive. That's the problem with it. And that's probably part of the sales problem is, you know, you don't go out and brag about your Titan to all your Chevy or your Ford friends. It just doesn't work that way. Andre, if you, if you fill it up with the right gas right now, it's got the, 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 the biggest standard engine in class, right? Not, 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 not optional because the Chevy's still the most powerful. Uh, so do you think if we were to do the new one up the hill, given the numbers, you think it would do better? Yeah, I would. So the 2017 was the uh, new generation, but the seven speed automatic. Yep. Um, and then what happened in 2020, right? They kept the same engine basically but they have a tuning for premium fuel. So now it's producing, it can produce up to 400 horsepower standard. And that's the base Titan, you know, uh, that's the only engine he can get. Uh, and 413 pound feet of torque is where it's at on torque. Um, and now it has a nine speed. So yes, if we were to do it tomorrow, I think it, would, it could go up the mountain a little bit quicker and maybe even perform better on the downhill because the new nine speed is actually an improvement, a considerable improvement, I think, over the old seven speed. I remember I did a trip, what was it, a couple of years ago. Um, I towed about 400 miles with a Titan, um, and I towed the boat, which was about 6,000 pounds, and everything was okay except it was hunting for gear on the way up the mountains, and it wasn't just, it was not a very relaxing experience. And I think the new nine speed is better. Yeah, I think they really did do a good job. I mean, you know, we call it a, a refresh, but sometimes they're mild and sometimes they're significant. And this one is significant, right? It not only looks better, but I think they went in and did a lot of engine calibration and tuning. So please stay tuned, guys. We'll take it up the mountain as soon as we can, uh, you know, as things go back to something where, where you know, resembles normal. Uh, and we don't have to do these things over Zoom anymore. <laughs> I, I miss just, you know, doing this in the office uh, and uh, looking you guys in the face, not in the screen. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the next one up the mountain was the 2019 Ram um, 805, um, which is, you know, seven seconds better than the Titan. 4.7, which was class leading. It really did well fuel economy wise. The Hemi, uh, you know, for old engine did really well, but going down 10 brake applications. And let's face it, uh, all these trucks had a lot of brake applications. They're not, uh, they're not the best when it comes to actually uh, breaking the uh, load. What do you think of the Ram? You like it, Kent? Well, which engine was that? I can't remember. So this, uh, what happened here was, uh, these are all 2019s. So the Ram and an upcoming GMC and upcoming Ford that we're discussing right now, they're all 2019s. And these are the most powerful versions of each truck. So in this Ram, it's the 5.7 liter Hemi. It's the 350. Okay, 350 Hemi. Yeah, hey, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that you know, it's 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 what it is. I mean, it's that half ton classic. Been so many things with diesels and all these other things that that keep them afloat in there. But it, that's about where they've always placed. They've always been like third place all these decades. And you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they're getting closer to breaking out. I mean, they're probably going to kick GMs, but the rate things are going. But yeah, it's 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 a midline truck. It's kind of like the Titan. It's kind of it's been, it's been used to be in third place for such a long time, and I, it's got great promise. I mean, look at the Rebel and all the other things in that truck. I love the interior in that, but it was not remarkable going up or down the hill. So, you know, 10 brake applications, there's nothing great there. And the fuel mileage was interesting, 
you know, it's 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 weird how they did that. I mean, that's a whole mile to the gallon. That's a lot, actually. That's and, a huge uh, amount. That, that's yeah. like twenty percent. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. And people driving these a lot of miles, I mean, they're going to look at that. I mean, you think what they got on the flat and all these other places where you do EPA tests. That's that's probably the most remarkable thing about it is you know you get that big three fifty getting great fuel mileage, and that's cool. I like that. And you know, and then and people are very loyal to Ram. I would say that people are more loyal to Ram than any other brand, which always surprised. But that's what it is. And Andre, what are the numbers on the Hemi? Well, it's uh, it's really powerful. It's a uh, three hundred ninety-five horsepower, four hundred and ten pound-feet of torque. But I want to point out one more one thing. So we're talking about basically five half-ton trucks here. We're in number three right now, on time. But they're so far they're within about what thirteen seconds of each other. You know, the mid-sized trucks. There was a big gap from the slowest to the fastest, right? Over what? almost two minutes, right? Uh, same thing in heavy duties. There was a minute and a half of difference. This, we're talking seconds. So I think on the half ton full size truck segment, they're so close together that it's really hard. You're really splitting hairs over here, you know, trying to figure out which truck did the best, you know, how they performed. Uh, the Hemi did really well, had an eight speed automatic. Um, on fuel efficiency, did really well. I was surprised in the downhill with a lot of these trucks. Uh, the downhill performance was not very good. Yeah, and let's face it, you know, the, the manufacturers have, especially the three, three domestic brands, have a lot of options. Uh, unfortunately, Ram doesn't, right, compared to the others. They only have the Hemi for domestic brands. They have the Pentastar, uh, which we've towed with. Um, Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Up the mountain, and then they have uh, they have the D they have the eco diesel. Uh, when you get to GM and Ford, now you're looking at a lot more choices. Um, so let's talk about the GM. Um, this was the big boy, the 6.2 liter, 420 um, horsepower, the most powerful truck you can buy uh, in its class with that uh, big 6.2. It did it in eight minutes and one second. So basically, it did it in the speed limit. Um, yeah. 3.8 mpg so just almost one mpg less than the hemi uh, but on the way down 10 brake applications kent did that thing not grade shift or why are we looking at 10 brake applications well none of them really perform well going down here 11 9 10 10 10 10 that's just what they are they're they're not calibrated right i mean we've had long talks with some of these engineers and how they need to calibrate that in tohoe mode differently than what's in regular mode so that it will force itself to grade shift and save your brakes so it's a typical problem, but you know, that 6.2 is that powerhouse that I love. And you know, you get down to sea level, I've been in love with these trucks racing down there, and the Chevy will beat the Ford. It, and it's, it's interesting how, you know, how things prove out that a turbo would have helped that 6.2 in the mountains, but of course it doesn't have it. But the 10 speed is a big deal for that. You know, I mean, I, that really tickles me to death. I've had no problem with their eight speeds or their six speeds, but yeah, that, those are just not – because none of them are diesel, so they don't have exhaust brakes, so they're a little bit of a disadvantage. All they have is tall mode. And so those trucks, you know, most people going down there will probably brake shift manually to keep it under that 10 brake applications. And that's another story. But, no, man, I love that 6.2. It's a racehorse. You get in that thing that flat out flies. Now they got the steering wheel straight. Now they got the brake control on the right side. I enjoy the heck out of driving that. It's one of my favorite engines is that 6.2 V8. It's – it's a workhorse and it flies as long as you can afford premium fuel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's face it, Andre, when you're up there at 10,000 or 12,000 feet above sea level, you're down like 30%. So even though you've got 420 officially, you're probably down more like 300 horsepower, which is significant. Uh, what do you think of um, the 6.2? Do you like it? I, I do love it. And we recently drag raced it against the 5.3, and there was no diff, there is no. I mean, the difference is so drastic. The 6.2 accelerates much better. It jumps off the line. Um, and with all these trucks, we're talking about towing around, what, 9,100 pounds. So we're kind of approaching that 10,000-pound trailer weight mark with all of these trucks. And I think that's where they're struggling on their braking, right? Um, I think if we towed less, let's say, you know, if you're towing 7,000, 8,000 pounds, I think uh, maybe that's a sweet spot for a lot of these engines. But as soon as you, you know, load them heavy and the trailer at, at almost 10,000 pounds, it's about twice the weight of the truck itself, right? So um, that's why we always work carefully on setting up the hitches properly using, you know, like Gen Y hitches, uh, really heavy duty, 
uh, weight distribution, all that stuff. But the 6.2 is a great engine, um, and it continues to be uh, really powerful. You know, now, wait a minute. I'm, I'm old and forgetful. Which engine did you guys get in your trail box? I can't remember. I was just I was just going to tell. I was just going to say. You know, when it came to spending our own money, uh, we ended up buying the five three. We didn't get the six two. And I had a long conversation with Andre about this. And to be honest, I don't miss it. I, you know, I think the five three is uh, plenty powerful for ninety percent of the things that most people will do with that truck. You know, whether you're going off roading, whether you're towing. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I find it, it's very fuel efficient. So yeah, the six, the six, two is, you know, the, uh, the star of the show, but the five, three workhorse does really well, at least in our application. Um, all right, let's go on to the Ford Andre. And that was the, um, EcoBoost, right? The big 3.5 liter twin turbo. Yep. And this is, is a again, top of line. truck. Um, yep. And, and the time on it up the mountain, uh, we flew up there with um, seven minutes and 55 seconds. Did you so break the speed limit? It, it was at the speed limit, absolutely, <laughs> the entire way. Um, so what happens on a lot of these runs, we don't use cruise control. And in this history, you know, over the last about six years, um, and, and that's because cruise control, it used to pop out of cruise control because you're under load and you're towing really heavy. And recently we found out, right, Roman, that if you set cruise control, it'll just slow down and won't tell you that it's slowing down. <laughs> it's basically just said, okay, you asked for 60, but you're gonna go 40, you know? And it, it, so it doesn't quite work. <laughs> so, so, but 3.3 MPG, so not the best, near the worst. And once again, 10 brake applications on this big twin turbo V6 and 10 speed. Kent, you like oh, you like the turbos or you yeah, don't like the turbos? Yeah, it's it's third from the bottom on MPG. It's nowhere near the bottom. But let, let me tell you the story. And this is a story that Roman brought up when we were debating the Ike Gauntlet. Is this, you know, what really changed Ike and all the things we do was this 3.5 EcoBoost twin turbo. What do you think about it? You're in the mountains, you got no altitude, you got no air, you're you suck in air, you gotta have turbo. And it's wonderful, but this is what how it's changed the Ike is because we couldn't put a big enough load on it to slow it down. I mean, you could go up to 80 miles an hour if you wanted to. I mean, they wouldn't let me, but I could have. But that's the problem with that engine. It's so much power that, and of course, the 6.2 can do a lot of stuff too. But, you know, we had to change our benchmark because, you know, you, you could get to that, it could get below eight and you could just fly up it. So it got down to be a contest of who got off the line quickest, what was the quickest acceleration to try to beat that eight minute mark. And that makes it tough. It makes it tough to, to get a test where you can test the trucks that have the ability to tow their max capacity flying up that hill. It's really easy on the heavy duties. All you do is put more weight on it, which we proved. So now we're clear up to 30,000 pounds, which we didn't used to be anywhere near there in the years past. But on the half tons, we really can't put any more weight on them. We got to find something else to slow them down. But yeah, you, you can't be a twin turbo at altitude. I mean, that's why I bought one because of all the things it does and fuel mods and all that empty is impressive so yeah they've done that right i mean everybody complains about the turbos and all the different things that's happened in the past and they you know they've got two different injections on they got a 10 speed they keep changing it to where you know i always thought they should put this in a 250 but they didn't listen to me but no i mean i love this truck and you know obviously i bought one but yeah yeah it's uh, we got to come up with some new new t new ways to slow that puppy down because you know if we could have gone faster we could have gone faster yeah yeah, Andre, Andre, um, people might be wondering, why aren't we comparing uh, all the other V8s to the Ford 5 liter? Why are we doing the EcoBoost? Why are we doing the EcoBoost? So these are kind of the best and the most powerful engines in each truck, right? So obviously uh, Ford is offering six different engine options, um, technically now, six. GM is offering seven different engine options. Um, uh, you know, you said Ram 3, Maybe four if you consider eTorque as kind of an update um, to what they're doing. Um, so once again, these are the trucks that perform the best for each manufacturer that we've tested. Um, and the 3.5, um, we've tested, I, I remember we towed on a different run, not this one, but we towed about 11,000 pounds with a different truck. And once again, it went at the eight minutes. Uh, so what Mr. Truck is saying is completely, is completely true you can't really slow this truck down with a load. So it's, uh, you know, they're rated up to 13,000 pounds now. 
It's a very specific two-wheel drive truck, right? Um, it's kind of difficult to find. Uh, but once you're getting into those big heavy weights, I wouldn't recommend towing much more over 10 uh, with, a, with a half ton. All right, Kent. Now it's your money. I know you bought the Ford, but uh, <laughs> give them the choice. Which, which, one, which one would you buy? Is it just as a towing truck, not, not as you know, all around or not as an off-roader, just as a towing truck. Well, I love the 6.2. I mean, Chevys are got a winner there. I really enjoy it. But, yeah, I mean, in the 210 speeds, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to not like that Ford. I, I don't know. I mean, I, did you think I was going to pick the Tundra? <laughs> I have to pick the 150. I mean, that's, I went through this in my own life. So I know how to compare these. And, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, as much as I like that 6.2 at altitude, you got to go with turbos. If you want um, power, you got to go with turbos. How about you, Andre? What's your pick? As much as I like the power of the EcoBoost, especially here in Colorado, I'm going to go 6.2. I'm going to go General Motors. Um, especially, you know, you could, uh, you know, hear the sound of those dual exhaust pipes coming out the back. And um, although I love the Coyote as well, the Coyote Ford, but the 6.2 for me might be the truck, uh, just the best half ton. Yeah, I, I'd go with the uh, 7.3 and the Ford. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the Godzilla half ton. I forgot about that puppy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one. You know, the, the one, the big old half ton, the, the one that, <laughs> that might be so big, it might be heavy duty. All right, no, I, I was just kidding there. Um, you know, I, I'm going to go with what we bought. I, I think that, you know, I, I, we just towed um, – we just towed our Razor uh, to Moab with the Trail Boss, with the 5.3. And obviously, it's not a heavy load, right? I think we were towing, how much would that be, Andre? Like five to 6,000 pounds, right? Yeah. Uh, but that thing just, just flew up the mountain. It was plenty powerful. It got incredible fuel economy. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's funny because maybe it's a truck that you drive. That's a truck that, that, that you fall in love with. But I've really, I've really taken with that truck. And so... I don't think you need the big engines. I think uh, they're probably overkill for the most part. So I'd go with the Silverado with the 5.3, the one that we actually bought. Well, you know, Rowan, the 5.3, that is a 327. Whoa. That's the size of the old Corvette engine, 327. <laughs> you know which truck I would pick uh, for the best towing rig? It's, it's the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck, yeah. Cybertruck. You mean that make-believe truck that's in all the cartoons? It's yeah. like <laughs> well, batteries in the trailer? I don't know. Actually, no, it does, you, bring it doesn't exist. you bring up a good point. I can't wait till, you know, we're doing this uh, with electric trucks and that's coming quick, right? That's not going to be that, you know, two years from now, we'll be sitting here talking about how uh, we were, you know, drinking coffee for two hours, <laughs> charging up the cyber truck yeah. and Silverthorne, waiting for it to get enough charge to go back up the mountain. Well, we'll take our iPads and put them in our ears so we can listen to the sound of V8. Instead of whatever the hell noise that electric engine makes or the motor, yeah, I will have to let. <laughs> what's that called? They they have fake stuff in there, the speakers. That there's a name for that, but yeah, augmented, augmented engine sound. Yeah, we need augmented V8s by a girl. Put them on iPad. We'll buy those. We'll buy those tapes. Yeah. Well, there you have it, boys. Uh, we know now that um, electric trucks are coming, but until they do, uh, and if you're looking out there for uh, a mid-size, full-size, or a heavy-duty truck, and you're looking for a towing rig, now you have our recommendations. If you want to know which trucks won uh, our Gold Hitch, the best towing truck in the country every year we pick, uh, go back uh, to either a previous podcast or perhaps one of the videos and check that out. Uh, Kent, Andre, anything else before we sign off uh, for this episode? Well, I also wanted to say that, you know, our Gold Hitch and Gold Winch for 2020, those awards are also out. So on tfltruck.com and our TFL Truck channel. So you'll see the best off-road trucks as well. Um, and of course, in May, we're doing Truck Madness. Truck Madness? What is Truck oh, yeah. Madness? It sounds like March Madness. That's right. That's where we see how many strippers we can put in the back of an F3, F250. No, no, that's not. No, that's not it. That's, that is not how many, a, how many kegs? Is it how many kegs we can put in the back of an F-350? Yeah, goats. We can always do goats. We can do something. We can be maddening, whatever it is. So truck but truck is coming. Uh, it's in May. It's happening. May 3rd. Basically, May 3rd. May 3rd. It starts, it starts in May 3rd. And it's basically a way for you guys, the viewers and listeners, uh, to actually vote on the best off-road truck. 
and it's set up in the bracket, so it's very easy and very fun, um, and uh, you will enjoy it, I'm sure. Yeah, we're pitting, we're pitting the, how many, how, you set up the brackets, how many trucks are there all together, Andre? 14, is that right? Or no, 12? No, sweet 12. Sweet, the sweet 12, we're pitting 12 off-road trucks against each other, and you guys out there are gonna get to vote. Uh, so if you wanna check out Truck Madness, we have a preview that is gonna be up at TFL Truck. Uh, check that out uh, or come back on May 3rd to TFL Truck, both the YouTube channel or uh, the website. And uh, yeah, come join the fun because uh, this is going to be uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday or Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. You'll see. Are we, or is there gambling involved? Do we have toilet paper involved? What else involved? I guess you'll tell us. We're later. not licensed to gamble, so no. We're, we're not we're not we're not um, we're not gambling but uh, the viewers certainly are and listeners certainly are voting um, so uh, at the end of uh, I guess it's May truck madness we will crown uh, the best off-road truck in the land uh, and I can't wait all right guys well thank you for spending this hour with us Ken thank you for uh, Lending your time, Andre. Thank you very much for uh, all the hard work you do to make these uh, gauntlets possible. And thank you guys uh, for joining us. As always, this is Roman, Kent, and yes. Andre. <laughs> See you guys next time and uh, stay safe out there. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you.